Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew, and today we're going to do a video about the risks and rewards of crypto and DeFi on the Flare network. Flare, and specifically the Canary network, Songbird, which is Flare Network's test net. We're going to dive into that really quickly, um, but it is my hope that by the end of this video, uh, if you're looking for some new opportunities, you would understand why Flare um, if you're interested after why flare you'll understand where to buy songbird how to wrap songbird how to delegate songbird and how to claim your rewards and rewrap redelegate so you get that compounding effect and you can earn some good rewards right now i'm getting over the last three months about uh if things stay the same about 32 percent apy not crazy for crypto but not bad for low risk. There's no locking. I can leave any time. I can exit my position whenever I want. And it's pretty simple, low maintenance approach. So I'll go over that right now. Let's dive into it. Um, so first, why Flare Network? Why do we need another layer one solution? Uh, here's uh, the use case and the problem they're solving. In short, Flare works as a smart contract platform for other layer one solutions that lack this functionality. So, for example, Stellar Lumens, XLM, or um, Bitcoin at the moment, or um, Dogecoin. Uh, there's so many you can name off. They don't really have smart contract functionality, so they don't get, you know they don't have de decentralized finance opportunities. So, Flare addresses that problem. They created a bridge for you if you are an XLM holder to be able to wrap essentially wrap your xlm or bridge it over to the flare platform completely collateralized and now your xlm is in on the flare network accessible to decentralized applications on that network earning you yield earning you money etc 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 so the problem they're solving is they're 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 providing a solution for other layer one blockchains to um, have decentralized finance without having to reinvent the wheel themselves and build everything from scratch. Okay, so that all sounds good. Why else Flare? Security and scalability. Uh, Flare Network is addressing an issue that it happens with proof of stake consensus protocols where there is a, con there is a conflict of interest between uh, with stakers because they are tempted to remove their stake in a platform to chase yield elsewhere. So the security of a proof of stake platform is tied to the staker staking their tokens, to the stakers staking their tokens. So for example, let's say you are staking Cardano uh, and your, your returns are maybe you know, 12, 13, 15% annually and that sounds great, and you're helping secure the Cardano network, but what happens when you see, oh, well, there's a better opportunity here where I could stake crypto and earn you know, 25%, 30%. Yeah, I think I wanna remove that, maybe change this into a different coin and go stake over here because I want better yields. So now, if enough people on Cardano do that and they start removing their stakes to chase better yields, the, doesn't the security of the Cardano network weaken? That's, that's the, um, that is the consensus from the Flare team. And so I think I have that right. If I do have it wrong, please, can I, please correct me in the comments. But that is uh, my high-level perception of what my interpretation of, of the documentation. So I would love to hear your thoughts if you think that I'm explaining it incorrectly. Okay, and another reason why Flare Network is scalability. So the ecosystem is built using the Avalanche protocol, the Ethereum virtual machine, and for consensus is using a federated Byzantine agreement algorithm. That's a mouthful to say, but it's a powerful uh, consensus algorithm. It's used by other chains, including XLM, XRP, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's... Um, Avalanche, I believe, is able to handle 4,500 transactions per second. And since the Flare Network uses the EVM, the Ethereum Virtual Machine, there are already a lot of developers who know how to develop in Solidity, so there should be a lot less friction in coming on 
to the Flare network and developing applications, decentralized apps. So that's all exciting. Another reason why Flare is low fees. I'm doing about five to seven transactions per week on the Songbird Canary Network, which is their test net. And each transaction is currently running me about one to two cents USD. So that's, you know, a lot lower than Ethereum right now. Okay, so now let's look into the team. I always like to dive into the team behind a project before I invest. And uh, we'll start with the CEO. His name is Hugo Fillion. And previously he was a founder of Modular Building System, Future Generations. And he was a commodity derivatives commodity derivatives portfolio manager at two $1 billion plus funds. Okay. Yep. That sounds pretty good. And I looked at his LinkedIn and it looks like he has a master's of science in machine learning from UCL and also a bachelor of science in investment and financial risk management at Cass business school. So that sounds awesome. Uh, next up on the team, which I found interesting is, um, Dr. Nairi Usher. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly too. Please correct me if I'm not in the comments. Um, previously, uh, she was a postdoctoral researcher in quantum machine learning at UCL, worked in collaboration with uh, Siemens, Simons. I don't know. I, I, I've heard of that company. I've never had to pronounce their name before. On applications of quantum algorithms to healthcare and image recognition. Okay, very cool. Okay, now let's look at Sean Rowan, co-founder and CTO, involved in the blockchain space since 2015 when he designed secure vehicular communications protocols leveraging a blockchain-based public key infrastructure with colleagues at UCLA, TCD, and TCD, and also an R&D engineer at Rail in Dublin, where he developed back-end network software for a healthcare assistive robot. Okay, yeah, all very cool. And I also did a quick search on LinkedIn for just what comes up under the Flare network in general. And I can see they have about 14 employees there. They've got some devs. I liked their smart contract developer. It looks like he's been in the blockchain space for quite a while. Um, more than four years experience working with smart contracts. So I like to see that in a team. And so, yeah, I, from a team perspective, I think it looks strong. Uh, they have a lot of funding and things are moving forward. All right, let's dive in now to community because I believe community is also a good indicator if a project is, you know, doesn't guarantee anything, but it's, it's nice to see, especially if there's a bunch of evangelists sort of forming around a community. I view that as a good sign. And so let's take a look first at the Flare Network's Twitter page. And they have 198,000 followers. And the tweets and replies section looks like they have a lot of engagement. So it looks like they tweet often. They get a lot of engagement. I like that. People interacting with them on social network. Um, what I like even more is that there are evangelists forming around Flare that are not actually affiliated with Flare. So here is one Twitter account. Um, by the handle Flare Community. And they have 97,000 followers, not affiliated with Flare Networks, but they do a lot for Flare Networks. They provide, they provide Flare Community provides a lot of high quality content for the Flare ecosystem, um, a lot of followers. They do a lot of support, uh, answering questions on Twitter. Uh, so I really love that. And then another uh, Twitter account I like as far as evangelism goes is uh, Mickey B. Fresh. Mickey B. Fre uh, at Mr. Fresh Time. Uh, give him a follow too and also check out their YouTube channel. A lot of quality content there. A lot of in-depth knowledge and it's a, fun, it's a fun channel to watch. You got two people going back and forth playing off each other and the, it's not only entertaining but the knowledge they give is great. So check all that out. Uh, I, I looked into Discord for Flare Network. I actually had a problem today um, with some of my songbird and, and the, um, and I had some questions regarding the reward rate I've been getting for the last couple days. I noticed it changed. So I, I went into the discord community. The discord community is really big. It's really active and team members got back to me within not, I would say less than 10 seconds. So very active discord. Uh, I was really happy to see that they pointed me in the right direction. 
I actually have to move and check out another uh, related, I have to check out a related app company uh, or project building on the Flare network called Flare, Flare uh, Finance. And that's probably where the issue lies, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing not related to this. So, and I'll ha probably have some videos coming up on Flare Finance in the future, but they're, they're two separate things. Okay, let's go over uh, Signal Provider really quickly. Signal Provider, um, if you're a developer, you'd probably really be into this. I, I am a developer, but I'm not going to use my development skills. I'm more, right, I'm, right now I'm just full-time crypto project analysis, investing, and, and doing some DeFi, and having a lot of fun with that. And I do love writing code, but I don't have enough time to do this well enough at the moment, maybe I will in the future. But basically what a signal provider does is, also known as a data provider, is you, you um, they're spinning up a, a web app, a service, a server-side application, and what this application does is it goes out and it, call, it makes a request to uh, an API that is provided by an exchange. So for example, it could be the Coinbase API, it could be the KuCoin API, it could be an API by a decentralized exchange, it could be all of those APIs. If a really savvy data provider wants, he could call, he or she could call a bunch of APIs and, and, and manipulate that data to come up with um, the price of XLM in a given minute. And so the data, the, the data provider pulls that data from the centralized exchange or a decentralized exchange and then sends that to the Flare time series oracle. And then the Flare time series oracle, uh, that from there it's all into the Flare network and used in the Flare ecosystem and that price data is available for decentralized applications. And so it's really cool to do the same thing in sort of like the Ethereum space you would have to use another service, another blockchain service such as Chainlink. Here, it's all part of the same ecosystem, which I think is really cool. And imagine one day it's gonna be more than, these data providers, these signal providers are gonna be sending more than just um, cryptocurrency price data. They're gonna be sending, it could be anything. It could be weather data, it could be sports data, it could be real estate prices. So the, it's so early days, it's just phenomenal uh, what this platform is doing with this approach and it's just the sky's the limit. But anyway, so the signal providers who provide the most accurate price data are rewarded with Songbird tokens on the Canary Network and they're rewarded with Flare tokens on, this, on the uh, Flare Network once that goes live. And so you can participate in this without being technically savvy by simply delegating, wrapping and delegating your Songbird tokens to these signal providers. So what you do is you choose two signal providers in Bifrost and then you delegate a portion to each. I delegate 50% to one and 50% to the other. Right now I'm delegating 50% of my Songbird to a uh, ATFSO, AFTSO, uh, and then Alpha Oracle. And you can go and check out the websites of these signal providers if you're interested in digging in. Um, this one looks like it's just more about the web service, so they don't really have a website, but others do, uh, like Alpha Oracle. If you open up that one, I believe they have, yeah, all kinds of information. Flare Network signal provider delivering data to the decentralized. So that's exactly what they do. They take centralized data and they... Get, they, they have algorithms to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And then they move that data, they send that data over to a decentralized network like Flare. Or in this case, only to Flare. Um, and then, so what you can do, yeah, you delegate your Songbird to these signal providers and then you get a part of their rewards, part of their weekly rewards. If you're technically savvy and you want to spin up and become a signal provider, yeah, I'm sure your rewards would be a lot higher if you're providing accurate price data. Um, but you don't have to be technically savvy. You simply delegate in your Bifrost wallet. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And it's a really easy, simple way to earn right on the layer one. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's uh, move on to, to um, wrapping, delegating, and earning income, earning some, earning some um, yield. I'll do a demo on Bifrost. But first, if you're new to crypto and you don't know how to get your dollars over to the Bifrost wallet in the form of Songbird token, here's, the path, here's one path you can take if you're in the United States 
Um, if you're somewhere else, just substitute Coinbase for an exchange that works in your location. Um, and you, if you're in the United States, you could actually probably replace this with crypto.com and a couple others I just can't think of right now. But what you would do is you create an account on Coinbase and then you connect your bank to Coinbase. And then from Coinbase, you can move US dollars from your bank to Coinbase. Let's say $1,000, for example. Then you would exchange 1,000 of your dollars for 1,000 USDT. That's Tether. It's a stable coin that, that um, is connected to the value of the dollar. So one of your dollars from the bank is the equivalent of one USDT, which is a cryptocurrency. Now you move your USDT from Coinbase over to Bitru. And then now that you have your USDT on Bitru, you can exchange it for Songbird token. And then once you exchange it, your USDT for Songbird token on Bitru, you can then send your Songbird token over to your Bifrost wallet. And now that it's on your Bifrost wallet, you can start earning passive income. Okay, so now we will move on to a quick demo. Okay, so now that you have your Songbird token moved into your Bifrost wallet, Let's wrap some Songbird and then delegate it. Right now you can see I have a balance of 16 Songbird in here. I have zero wrapped Songbird. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this, we're gonna wrap some of these Songbirds and then we're going to delegate them to a couple signal providers. I'll talk a bit about signal providers in a second. So first thing you wanna do is wrap your Songbird. You always wanna leave some Songbird in here for fees, so don't wrap it all because you'll end up in a jam where you have to buy more just so you can have enough to cover your fees. But the fees are really small, so you only need to leave a couple dollars in. Right here, this is basically what I left in to cover my fees. Most of my Songbird right now is on Flare Finance. But um, just so you know, don't wrap all of your Songbird. Le leave a tiny amount for fees. Okay, so to wrap it, you just click on the Songbird thing there. In the right-hand side of the top, click the three dots. Click the Wrap button. And then you pick how many Songbirds you're going to wrap. I'm going to just wrap two. Click Continue. And then it's going to want you to confirm the transaction. And as you can see, there's a network fee on there of uh, the of 0.2 Songbird, the equivalent of three cents. All right, so you click confirm, enter in your PIN number. And now you can see that the transmission transaction has been submitted. Hit close. And it looks like it went through. And you can see the contract call. So if you go back now to your, to your wallet screen, you can see that you have two less Songbird, but now you have two wrapped Songbird. Okay, so now that we have two wrapped Songbird, we are going to delegate one of each to a signal provider. So what you would do is you click on wrapped there. That'll take you to your wrapped songbird screen where it shows the amount of wrapped songbirds you have and the value in US dollars in this case. Click the three dots in the top right, click delegate. Okay, and then now that you're on this screen, you select your signal providers. I am going to go with Alpha Oracle and AFTSO. So you got Alpha Oracle, and then I'm gonna delegate 50% to, to this signal provider, and you just hit confirm. Type in your pin, close. And then I'm going to delegate the other songbird to AFTSO, 50%. So just hit continue and you hit confirm. Type in your pin. Transaction submitted, closed. So now, boom, you're done. And see right here, where it says pending rewards, you will start seeing those show up pretty fast. And right now, the rewards are pretty phenomenal. Okay, and then in addition to that, you can earn some massive additional compounding using Flare Finance and Flare Farm. However, that is a separate project. They are not affiliated with the Flare Network. Flare Finance is probably more the equivalent of maybe Uniswap or, or some of these other 
projects that are building on top of layer one solutions. So um, DeFi Kingdoms, uh, which is a really cool play to earn um, game where you can stake and be a liquidity provider and they have their own token called Jewel. And, but that's built on top of Harmony One. So you can do some really good, uh, some really powerful compounding on Flare Finance, which is built on top of the Flare network. But that's really new. And I still have to do more of a deep dive into that before I completely recommend it. I'm experimenting with it now. Um, and I will also have some videos coming on DeFi Kingdoms as well, because that's just a lot of fun. And um, I think that's about it. So let's wrap it up. That's all for this video. Uh, please do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor and this channel is only for entertainment. And um, this is not financial advice. It's just uh, me wanting to dive into projects, hopefully add value so you can get started on your own due diligence and, and, uh, and hopefully crypto will, will change your life. Okay, that's it. Have an awesome day and I'll see you soon.